Hey nerd, let's do a quick and dirty on soaking, sprouting, and fermenting for high FODMAP foods. So here are a couple of ways that you can lower potentially the FODMAP content of foods. First, we have soaking. FODMAPs are water soluble. We glue those sugar chains together by dehydrating them, removing water. And so when you add water back in, some of those chains might start to break apart and leach into the surrounding fluid. Now, there is a difference between soaking, say beans or grains overnight versus having canned products. Um, you're gonna find that you get way more bang for your buck with canned products just because they have way more time to leach those FODMAPs out into the water, therefore lowering the overall FODMAP content. When it comes to sprouting, this is when you um, sort of like moisten some seeds, uh, grains, or even um, beans, and you transition them from kind of a seed state into an active grain. What happens here is that you are activating an enzyme, which is going to break down some of the FODMAP content, but this does not work for every type of grain or bean, so you want to check the Monash app to make sure that you are sprouting things that are actually going to be helpful to you. The third one is fermentation. And this is when we talk about having microorganisms in um, sort of a method of cooking or sort of exposing uh, different raw foods to this fermentation mechanism. And what's going to happen is these little buggos are going to come through your food. Sourdough bread is a really great example. And they are either going to consume, um, all, not all, uh, they'll consume a significant number of FODMAPs, therefore lowering the overall content of food, or they're going to create a byproduct that's helpful to you.